Welcome to a special edition of the Referrals Podcast. Introducing our new Daily Dose. We've assembled the ultimate crisis response team for your business. Generous leaders from around the globe teaming up to teach, guide, and lead you through this time of isolation and quarantine. Now, let's meet your host, Michael J. Mayer. Hey everybody, this is Michael J. Mayer with another episode of The Daily Dose, The Daily Dose of Positivity and Productivity. Have you ever wondered if there is something like a magic pill, like a really small thing that you could take on a daily or weekly basis that would change your life? Today, we may change your life. We may give you the magic pill that you have been looking for. I cannot wait for you to be introduced to our guest. Now, many of you know her and love her already because you've experienced her teachings through 30 mornings, but I'm going to make you wait because we are going to go to a different ritual today, and I cannot wait to deliver this message. Hold on to your horses. Maybe even start your watch party early today. Now, Do I have some announcements for you? I will tell you, we have something in store for you with the Daily Dose that will literally blow your mind. Uh, We are working very hard behind the scenes. And I'm telling you something is I had one thing that I really wanted to do during the Daily Dose. And guess what? It's going to happen. I can't give you any details right now until I know for sure. I know I'm teasing, but here's the thing. Now, 30 mornings class starts Monday. Monday, sign up today so that we can get you this book and you can get it printed and bound at Kinko's or FedEx or somewhere like that, or do it on your own. The the book alone is worth $500. Just if you just went through it on your own through the book, but you know what? We're not gonna have you do it on your own. We're going to give you help, but we're not just going to give you help. We're going to give you a daily help every single day for 30 days. The ultimate 30-day challenge is 30 mornings, 30mornings.com. Can you change your life in 30 mornings? You know what? The answer is a resounding yes. Now, also, we have a vision board class tonight, vision board class tonight, with Jen Scarpero and Sherry Mayer. It is BYOB, bring your own beverage, and BYOD, bring your own dreams and goals. So that is in the event section at the Generosity Generation. Also, you gotta check out that May calendar. You gotta check out that May calendar. It's marked as an announcement in the group, in the Generosity Generation group. If you're not in the group, you can go to joingengen.com or search Generosity Generation on Facebook to join the group. Join the group today. Trust me, you want to join it today. Now, looking ahead, next Monday, we have Michael Hellickson, who coaches with Club Wealth, and I cannot wait for him to give us our Monday's motivation. On Tuesday, we have a speaker who has shared the stage with Tony Robbins on multiple occasions. His name's Sean Callagy, and he is going to blow you away. It's a subject called unblinded, and we all have scotoma. He's going to show you how to get rid of your blind spots, identify those blind spots, and become better because of it. Wednesday, is your Facebook group have 50,000 people in it? If not, you should probably learn from somebody who does, and that's Ann Schutte. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about how to grow your Facebook group. And then Thursday, James Malinchek, my coach. How would you like to learn from my coach? Uh So one of my coaches is going to be on Thursday, James Malinchek. And then Friday, Don McNaughton is going to be with us. One of our certified referral trainers next week is going to be just absolutely mind blowing. Now, also, we have been implementing the five a day, 25 a week, identifying the most positive, energetic, and successful people in your world, giving them a call filling out the VIP form, writing them a handwritten note, and then inviting them to your Facebook group. Listen, that's your daily five. That's your five-star day. How do you know if you have a five-star day? If you call five people, you do your VIP, 
you do your handwritten note, and then you invite them to your Facebook group. That's it. That's all you got to do on a daily basis. Five people. Can you change your life just by adding five great people to your life? Are you kidding me? Off the charts. So speaking of great people, I I want to do like I have a shout out right here. So I, it's like time to do my shout out. So, so I want to do a shout out to this person. Now, look at that. This was sent to me. Now, many of you know that I am a lighthouse. I uh, run my life as if I am a lighthouse. I want to shine my light bright. I want to shine it for all to see those who need it for guidance and help. I'm here. I'm not going to run up and down the beach going, use me, use me, because a lighthouse doesn't either. You know, I'm going to attract my perfect customers, my perfect clients. I'm going to attract positivity. I'm not going to attract the submarines of the world, those jerks, <laughs> right? I'm going to attract those who need my help. And I'm going to keep shining my light bright. And sometimes it can be too intense. Sometimes it can be too intense. But this is the card I got. And not only that, I got a card. And then I also got a package of handwritten note cards, which I desperately needed by the way. And just so you know, Shalee, this is the last pack left. Uh-oh. Right? So we're running out. But but Shalee Davis wrote this to me. You have, Michael, you have touched so many lives in positive ways. When you shared your route of Lighthouse cards that touched my heart, enjoy the cards. And I mean, this is a beautiful card. Let me see if I can put it right up there. I mean, this is one of my favorite cards of all time. I love it. So, you know, I have to introduce you but before we do that, you need to start your watch party, everybody. If you're not familiar with how to start a watch party, yes, I know if you are familiar, you're like, holy cow, you tell us every time. I tell you every time because you need to be reminded every time. But go down to the share button. It's right down below. And then you're going to start watch party. Click on the start watch party. Do not click go because you would start a watch party in the generosity generation group, which doesn't make sense. You need to change the group name to either your personal profile or your own Facebook group. And trust me, today is G-rated, PG-rated. Uh, trust me, there's no cuss words. You can share this with everybody from 11 to 111, and they would be fine. So here we go. Now, Shalee Davis is a global real estate advisor with Vista Sotheby's International Realty in the Los Angeles, South Bay, California. She brings her background in construction and land development, along with her skills in financial analysis and negotiations, to bear as she delivers the lux luxury experience to relocating executives, retiring professionals, professional athletes, and aspiring investors. However, what really makes her heart sing is teaching and sharing systems and the power of rituals, which she has used in her life and in helping others to build the foundation for their level, level 10 lives. Shalee is a continuous learner and implementer. She is committed to teaching at the highest level and is one of only four of our cert certified mornings coach. She is also a certified referral trainer, certified referral coach, founders club, one of our first. She is also a certified strategic coach and a certified NLP practitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, without more pomp and circumstance, oh yeah, May 22nd, we're doing a senior day. Check that out on the schedule. Without any more pomp and circumstance, let's bring on Shalee Davis. Welcome to the Daily Dose of Positivity and Productivity. Thank you, Michael. I am so excited to be here because this is, you know, as you know, I love teaching about the rituals. Um, I love doing the miracle morning, but what I want to talk about today is how you put your miracle morning on steroids. Mm, that's going to be very interesting. And and so, you know, rituals, structure, you know, do you think that's been like important in today's coronavirus era, like the quarantine times? How, you know, like how has rituals become important to you and your clients? Well, you know... The thing about rituals is they create a framework so that you don't like wake up every morning worried about what's going to happen next. You kind of already know what's going to happen because you've created your little framework. Mm -hmm. And I say to people, you know, rituals and systems are kind of like um, a box. And if you if your day is full of apples and oranges and popcorn, and you just lay it all out on the table and then a strong wind comes along, 
your day is a mess, right? Mm -hmm. But if you mm -hmm. take your apples and your oranges and your popcorn and you stick them in your box, then you create all this open space on your table, all this open space in your life. And it just gives you so much freedom and confidence that I don't know how anybody can live without it. You know, you're exactly right. It, it, it's, it's one of those, we talked about imagination this week a little bit and join the imagination nation, you know, and an imagination, you know, like the best use of imagination is creativity, writing books, telling stories, creating, crafting stories, uh, dreaming, doing a vision board tonight at 6 p.m., you know, those kind of things. And, and the worst use of imagination is anxiety. And, and anxiety is caused by not knowing what's next. And like you just said, like knowing what's next lowers your anxiety and, and keeps you kind of in the game, keeps you more productive. And I love the box example, you know, because it, it, it really is, you know, I, I, it begs the question, like, are you filling your day with like fruit, vegetables, or are you filling your day with steak and lobster? You know what I mean? Like, you know, why should we fill it with candy and junk food when we could fill it with steak and lobster? You know, I, and, and you know what, I haven't developed that analogy, but I can't, I can't wait to develop that analogy with you because it's like, you know, what we're talking about today is, is filling an hour or filling a ritual time with steak and lobster, aren't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when did you realize the power of rituals? Like when, when did you get that? Cause I'm guessing that maybe you didn't have a parent who forced you to do a morning ritual or a nightly ritual, right? So, so when did you learn the power of rituals? Well, you know, it's really funny. I learned it kind of intuitively as a child, um, but I didn't totally embrace it until about 10 years ago. And um, so the way I learned it intuitively as a child was I knew that if I had a reason that excited me to get up in the morning, if I, you know, put myself to bed at night knowing that I was going to fall asleep immediately and all that kind of stuff, that it just made my day so much longer and so much more productive and not only productive, but fun, mm. you know? It makes your life fun when you've got a reason to be up in the morning, right? And um, But about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with a debilitating disease. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they told me that there was a possibility I'd be in a wheelchair by the time I was 60. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 63. I'm mm -hmm. not in a wheelchair. I'm still running. I'm still doing lots of things that they told me I may never be able to do again. Wow. And what brought me back into doing rituals and having systems was healing my body. Mm. You know, if I allowed myself to just succumb to, oh my God, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning in pain. Mm. Guess what? I'd wake up tomorrow morning in pain because I set the stage for that, mm -hmm. you know? And then because my day had to be just a little more structured to give me more freedom. And that's something you guys really need to understand is that, you know, rituals and systems give you freedom mm. because they compartmentalize the things that you need to get done. And then they give you all the rest of the day to do the things you want to get done. Mm. Mm. That's powerful. It, the, the, the enriching ritual you know, and, and, you know, a ritual doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to be two hours. It doesn't have, it, it could be six minutes. It could be 30 seconds. I, you know, a great example of that is, is I would always do a ritual before I, I hit at home plate. You know, I, I did the same ritual. Why? Just because you know what, it got me into that mental and physical mode for being the best hitter possible. Well, that's what a morning ritual or a nightly ritual or a pre-leave or pre, uh, pre-start pre ritual does is, is it gets you in the mental and physical mode to do what you're about to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of great sports figures, not just Michael J. Mayer, the great, <laughs> the great baseball player, yeah. but, you know, Michael Jordan, he had, yeah. you know, a ritual every morning, um, the breakfast club. 
And he did that even on the days when he wasn't training. And then I loved, he had this one ritual that whenever he would get on the court, he'd chalk up his hands and then he'd go blow the chalk in yeah. the face of the guys sitting behind the scorers. Table. Now, was that LeBron or was that Michael Jordan? That was Michael Jordan. He and so LeBron picked that up and did it later, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. I did not know that. Yep. And Michael and Jordan I, started that. Michael Jordan rock. So, you know, the other thing too, is if you'll notice, if you ever watch NBA, every time an NBA player shoots a free throw, they do the same ritual before they take the shot. It's a spin of the ball, three dribbles, pose and shoot. Or some of them like Stephen Curry, just to get the ball and shoots it in you know, very efficient, very quickly. So, you know, rituals are powerful no matter what we want to do, as long as we want to do it at a, at a high performance level. And so what is your, you know, philosophy around, around systems, you know? So, you know, my philosophy around systems is, again, um, I think that they give you freedom. And why do I say that? I'm sure we have all experienced, we have a project that needs to get done, mm -hmm. right? And it's not due until next week. And so we kind of dribble at it all day long, a little bit here, a little bit there. Then we get distracted. We go off to the side and then we come back to it. And But if we have a system that says, okay, I'm going to work on this project for one hour today, period, end of quotes, you know, then I go in, I work on it for an hour today. I evaluate at the end of the hour where I am, how much time do I need to set aside tomorrow? Cause I still have, you know, four more days before it's due. Mm. And the rest of my day is free. The rest of my day is open to do the things I want to do, to be more creative, to, you know, spend time with family, to just spend time with me sometimes, you know? Mm. Whereas if I don't have a system, if I don't have a way of containing the things that I need to get done, then they just expand to take up all the time available. You know, that's such a great point. It goes back into what Renee said earlier this week about like how to get into the flow, you know, how to get into flow and flow is a place where you are like nine times more efficient and productive than you normally are. So, you know, Michael Jordan was known for getting into the flow. He would get into the zone on the basketball court and he literally would make 14, 15 shots in a row. Steph Curry does the same thing. Uh, LeBron does the same thing. They get into this, this zone. Hitters sometimes get in a zone where, you know what, it's really hard to get them out because they're seeing the ball so well and they're in this, this state. So how do we get in the state? It's discipline plus surrender. That's how Renee defined it. I'd never heard mm -hmm. it defined that way, but that's what a ritual really is, is it's a discipline plus the surrender is just relax into it and just, and just, you know what, surrender. Don't feel constrained by the ritual or activity. Just surrender. I'm just going to do the best I can. I'm mm -hmm. just going to do the best I can. I was built for this one hour to do what I'm going to do and then get into it. And it's amazing how often you get into that flow and you had an hour blocked off and pretty soon it's, it's an hour and a half. It's two hours. It's, it's two and a half hours that have passed and it's, it's, it's powerful, you know, and it's what you're saying is, is block off that, that hour for that project, which takes mm -hmm. discipline. And then, you know, maybe showing up, which takes accountability, either self-accountability, which is the toughest kind of accountability, or having somebody there to hold you accountable, either an accountability partner, mm -hmm. a coach, uh, a friend, uh, you know, somebody that'll kick your butt, you know, if you don't show up or charge you a thousand bucks extra. <laughs> wink, wink, hint, hint. So in your opinion, what is the most powerful ritual for you? Well, you know, for me, it's about setting up my day. Mm -hmm. And I tell everybody, your day starts the night before. Your day starts the night before. Yeah. So if you go to bed at night thinking, oh my God, tomorrow is a terrible day. I've got eight things I need to get done and I'm not getting enough sleep and I'm going to wake up so tired. <laughs> Um, we do create our world with our words. 
And if mm. that's the last thought in your mind when you go to sleep at night, then that's the exactly what's going to happen tomorrow morning. Mm. And, you know, Michael, you came up with this wonderful um, format called Sweet Dreams, mm -hmm. which sets up a perfect, perfect bedtime ritual. But I have to tell you, my favorite part is your bedtime affirmations, because mm. it allows you to do pretty much everything in the sweet dreams, all in just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to share that I was just so excited because I think this is like the icing on the cake or the, you know, I mean, this is, this is what gets me up in the morning effectively. Mm -hmm. um, and to have pretty much all the people in the last class of 30 mornings say, oh my God, on the days I didn't do my bedtime affirmations, mm. I had such a hard time getting out of bed. Yeah. Wow. So, all right. So I believe, uh, so the bedtime affirmation. So how, what have you done with that? I actually have like three questions at once, but I want to make sure that I'm trying to ask them in the proper order. So, so what is, what is your bedtime affirmation, right? Everybody's bedtime affirmation is slightly different in some way. They can use the one that I composed a long time ago with mm -hmm. my buddy, Hal Elrod. And I believe you can even get that at bedtimeaffirmation.com. I'm not sure about that. We'll have to double check, but um, I do have it uh, printed somewhere. So, you know, so how have you amended that, made it your own and, and what does that look like? Absolutely. So the thing I love about your original bedtime affirmation is it had a number of components in it that are so important. So an affir before you start doing affirmations, you kind of need to get into a state of appreciation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your first affirmation in, in the day, in the nighttime affirmations. And I change it up a lot, but I still use this affirmation and appreciation as the first part of my bedtime affirmation. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate everything that I got done today. Mm -hmm. And I affirm that I got done everything that needed to get done. Or could get done. Or could get, well, That's right. so I always say that needed to get done. And I yeah. say, and the things that didn't get done today, they're, it's because I either wasn't ready for them or they're better set for tomorrow or some of them, you get to the end of the day and you go, I really didn't even need to do that. Right. Yeah. So you start out with this appreciation and affirmation of what your day gave you, the people that entered into your life, the mm -hmm. projects that you got completed, the great new ideas that you absorbed and just say, you know, I've gotten through my day and I have gotten through everything I need to get through today to set me up for a perfect tomorrow. Mm. And then I list out the things that I appreciate, including yeah. the places where I fell on my face because I appreciate that I really messed up here. And here's the lesson I learned from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. You know, uh, right from the very beginning, we've been talking about you know, generosity generation, the seven L system, refer co we help people build businesses and lives based on love, generosity, and appreciation. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it seems like kind of the easy ones, it, the easy one is generosity. People are pretty good givers pretty, pretty quickly, you know? Um, but, but it's like the love is, is do what you love, love what you do, you know, mm -hmm. and, and figure out what do you love about your profession and, and do it more. And anything else that you don't love, you're going to hand off because it's toxic. Like for me, paperwork is toxic. So I'm going to hand that off. Somebody else is going to do the paperwork. I'm going to do everything else, you know. And and then it's 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 the other side of of this, which is appreciation. And we say, or I say, you know, generosity is love in action. Right? You have a superpower, but it's latent. It's potential. It's not doing any good until you do something with it, which is generosity. And generosity does not mean money. It, you know, treasure is only one of the seven gifts of generosity. We can give with our time or give with our teaching, give with our team, which is our network of people, give with our thought plus action and give with our talk. We can refer people, recommend people, talk nicely about people, praise people, mm -hmm. compliment people. So, but the thing is, is, is with appreciation, it's love in reaction. 
And what we need to do is we need to appreciate everything that happens to us, which is sometimes easy when it's like a, you know, a birthday party or, uh, uh, you know, you've got the listing, but we also need to appreciate the things that we, you know, that some people might see as failures or hiccups mm -hmm. or problems because there's something to learn from. There's a silver lining of it. There, there's something that is going to be a long-term lesson from, from whatever that may be. Like the bad news you got 10 years ago about a, a debilitating disease that's going to put you in a wheelchair, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that could be the worst day of your life or the best day of your life. And you made the choice to make, you know what? That's the best day of my life. I learned more about rituals. I learned more about structure. I got healthy. I started running. I, I took control of what I could control. Mm -hmm. And the product is a an, an awesome person that you are today, you know? Oh, thank you. Well, that's the truth. So are you enjoying the daily dose? Want to connect with thousands of other business owners that are winning the referral game while working from home right now? Head over to the Generosity Generation Facebook group. Connect with leaders, visionaries, and business owners from all over the world. Go to www.joingengen.com. That's www.joingengen.com. So, you know, the power of the bedtime affirmation is it really sets the tone for the next day. That's what I'm finding with 30 mornings. I'm finding with teaching the morning ritual is, is that the morning ritual really starts at about 9 p.m. the night before. That's, that's I mean, I'll give it the opposite of is pull an all-nighter. <laughs> How good is your morning ritual going to be? If you pull an all-nighter, exactly, it, it's going to be horrible. Well, even if you get a little short on sleep, you know, and and what we've discovered is the healing potential and the growth potential of sleep. You know, mm -hmm. sleep is this eight-hour tool that if we don't use it, then we're probably not going to have the most fulfilled life we can. But if we will learn how to use sleep as a weapon for our healing, self-improvement, immune system, uh, and even thought. And even we can solve problems in our sleep, literally, exactly. figuratively. And, and, and you know what? I will tell you, I think it's the most untapped eight hours that there is. I truly believe that there is a power in sleep to untap or or tap into, mm -hmm. you know, they say we only use eight to 10% of our brain, right? Me, I'm probably five to 6%. <laughs> so it's like, you know, there's a way to tap into another percent or two or 10. I truly believe if we will learn how to use sleep properly and it's the pre sleep ritual, right? Which leads me to sweet dreams. You know, I could, I could, I could go on about sweet dreams. I, I'm such a, I'm such a fanatic about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it's one of those, like, you know, what have you noticed with your 30 mornings classes? Like, I want to, I want to go into that. And then one, one thing you've already told us is that if they'll do the bedtime affirmation, they have a better morning ritual. Exactly. You know, what else have you noticed? And just so you know, there's a lot of people who are typing in love usually, you know, can't wait to take it on Monday. You know, I took it with her and Neil last time, you know, so you've got a lot of fans uh, who have come here to support you. What have you noticed about those classes? What have you noticed about the third? Like, what have you noticed about the people who really do well? And what have you noticed about the ones who really struggle with it? I'm genuinely curious. And this is sure. not a rehearsed question. I, I really would like to know. So, you know, what we find is that, and, and Neil was the giver of this gift. What we find, especially in today's time, is that the morning ritual um, is really, you have to give yourself a little bit of grace. Mm -hmm. You have to give yourself a little bit of grace. It's about that one degree tweak that you talk about, not about perfection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that you taught us as trainers was 
you know, in, in Hal's book, he talks about waking up an hour earlier yeah. immediately and starting to yeah. do the morning ritual. Yeah. Well, in my personal opinion, that is a recipe for failure. Mm. And why do I say that? Because people, if you make little tweaks, then people just naturally fall into place. But if you try to just make that 180 degree turn, you know, have you ever tried to turn around a cruise ship? Yeah. For goodness sake, you know, yeah. it takes forever or you just give up yeah. one or the other. Right. Yeah. So what we're finding is that if people will take it and kind of make it their own mm -hmm. and 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 have a little bit of grace and know that today, maybe they're going to read for a half hour and tomorrow, maybe they're only going to read for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's still a perfect morning ritual. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, I want to, if we can kind of circle back a little bit to the bedtime yeah, affirmations, because there's two other really important things in the bedtime affirmations yeah. that help people get to that really great morning ritual. Yeah. And, and the first one is after you appreciate your day and affirm how wonderful it was, then you pre-frame, you do a thing called a pre-frame. And what that does is it helps to clear all the obstacles before mm -hmm. they happen. Mm -hmm. You can look up the, the definition of preframe, but basically it's used to clear the obstacles. Mm -hmm. So in your nighttime affirmations, in your bedtime affirmation, what you want to do is you acknowledge when you're going to sleep and when you're waking up. And sometimes we can't get eight hours for some mm -hmm. reason, but we affirm that it is plenty. It's exactly what we need tonight, not forever, mm -hmm. but tonight. So we pre-frame that that's exactly what we need and that our body's going to get all the rest and all the rejuvenation that it needs. Love so that's it. the second thing. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that's really important is a thing called future pacing. Mm -hmm. It's mentally rehearsing a future result so that it happens automatically. <laughs> Did you say automatic magically? Yes, automatically. Yeah, not even automatically. It was auto magically. I love yeah. that. I love that. And it's really a, a piece of visualization. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah. the last thing that you do is you say, you know, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning because it's such an exciting day, you know, and you might talk about a few of the things that are exciting about it or how it's going to help feed your goals, you know, and just kind of visualize waking up tomorrow morning powerfully and happily, joyfully and full of energy. Because the last thing you think about before you fall asleep is the first thing you think about when you wake mm -hmm. up in the morning. Yep. That is so true too. And, you know, with, with uh, if anybody has children, a lot of times those are things about their children. Like, you know, my son played uh, eight hours a fortnight and I'm the worst parent in the history of the world. And you go to sleep with that thought. And then you wake up like mad at your son before he even starts his day because like, you know, you've been thinking about it for forever. So yeah. it's one of those where you're, you're exactly right with the, the, the appreciations and the affirmations is kind of all rolled into one. And then the, the, the pre-framing of how you're, uh, you know, of of what it's going to look like, and then the future pacing, right? And the pre-framing right. is really, I'm how are whenever I wake up tomorrow is the right time to wake up. I'm going to wake up refreshed. I'm going to wake up great. Uh, you know, it, it's exactly enough hours of sleep for me to function on that day, and I can get through the day. And then the future pacing of of you know what? Here's the visualization. I wake yeah. up. I'm excited. I, I'm I'm light on my feet. I feel great. Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, real quick on the sweet dreams, I'll, people are asking about the acronym. I'm just going to give it real quick. So sweet is the Sunday night ritual. So this is only done once a week. On Sunday night, you're going to do sweet, which is you're going to look at the schedule. You're going to look at the weather. You're going to look at your exercise plan for the week. You're going to look at your eating plan for the week. And then the T is you're going to tie it all together by laying out your outfits that align with the schedule and the weather. You're going to lay out your clothes for the exercise plan. And maybe even, you know, for the super, I used to be super intense 
into weightlifting in, in college and just after college. And I had a pre-prescribed literally workout plan that I would do, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I would write it all out on Sunday and, and I was ready to go. And the other thing too, is you wear certain outfits for certain workouts. When you run, you, you wear something different than maybe you do on the weightlifting day. So maybe even different shoes. Today's world is so specialized shoes wise. <laughs> so sweet is a Sunday night ritual where you just lay out your outfits for the exercise. And then for us, it's, you know, it's uh, Sunday night clothes. It's um, Monday clothes. Tuesday is what we're going to wear during the day. And then we have baseball. So we have baseball clothes and then Wednesday and then Thursday is just like Tuesday. We've got our regular clothes and then Thursday night we've got our Thursday afternoon. We have baseball. So it's like all laid out, ready to go. And the nice thing about this is all week long, I don't have to make any decisions about what I'm going to wear. I don't get into that where I look in my closet going, I have nothing to wear when there's 5,000 <laughs> pieces of clothes and that you just line it up with the schedule line it up with the weather. If it's going to rain, you've got your umbrella ready. You know, you're just, you're just so proactive about the day. You feel like you're starting out a, you know, seven days ahead. And then, so the Sunday night ritual, I have to tell you, that's the one that I never miss. That's the one that it just like, seems like I can always do it. Have I missed a morning ritual? Yes. But is there a morning ritual where I just get up brush my teeth and go. That is a morning ritual. It's not my ideal morning ritual, but it does happen. And then dreams is nightly. So you're going to do this every, you know, Sunday through Saturday nights. And the nightly ritual is dreams. D, and by the way, I have a tweak on this that I have just done. This is a lesson from the quarantine times. I literally, this is, this is a tweak I've made on. So this, this acronym is brand new for everyone as far as one of the letters. So dreams is, D is for dim time. Like what time are you going to bed? And, and that's the most powerful thing in today's world is that have a dim time, have a wake up time and just stick to it. Even if it's 9 p.m. bedtime, 9 a.m. wake up time. Like even if that's it, like just set your, like you're, you, you, you're the best, you know, you're talking about this all the time, book in your day. Right. You know, book in your day. You say that all the time. Mm -hmm. And so dim time, what's your dim time for us? It's nine 30. And then R is for read, which instantly we're going to dim the lights. We're going to turn off the technology and we're going to open a book. You know, we're going to, we're going to start reading. And then the E is, is different for, we have done dreams with E as exercise, but it's been so confused and misconstrued that that people you should not exercise before you go to bed you, you you shouldn't you maybe stretch that kind of thing but but the e is now evaluate right which is evaluate you're going to evaluate your day you're going to celebrate your successes you're going to kind of look all right what did i get done what did i not get done and you're going to just write in your journal a few things that like you know you did but you're also going to write down the things that maybe you didn't do. And it, it's kind of a running, running list of what's going on in your life. Well, imagine having this running list and, you know, you're looking at it day 30, you've got 150 things you've done in the last 30 days. And you're like, oh my gosh, awesome. I didn't realize I got so much done. And then the A is appreciations. And, and this, this of course is, is, I believe it's a secret sauce is, you know, writing five appreciations. I appreciate from your day. What were five things you appreciate from your day? And then the M is meditation. I truly believe the greatest pre-sleep ritual item that you can do is meditation. And in many cases, before I even finish the meditation, I'm already in the S. And the S <laughs> is for sleep. Go to sleep. Lay down close your eyes, let it happen. The first week, five out of seven, you won't do it. It'll be fine. The next week, three out of seven, you won't do it. You'll be fine. And pretty soon, seven out of seven, you're going to sleep about 20 or 30 minutes after your dim time. Mm -hmm. And and you wake up like a ball of fire, like it's Christmas day. 
And uh, that's awesome. I mean, like, Shalee, I don't even know if we would have gone into the nightly ritual without your pushing, without your uh, being invited as one of our daily dose guests. And I just, I, I think the, the, the people of the generosity generation need to thank you for that. Uh, because the more that we're getting into this, it's just the more that is a key component to success in the quarantine mm -hmm. times and beyond. That's what many people hope they retain from the quarantine times wow. is the morning ritual and, and the nightly rituals. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. So what, um, you said earlier, I have to go back to it is, is you said, you know, we determine our world with our words, like go into a little bit of depth on that okay. before, before we, before we wrap up. Cause that's such a powerful statement. Right. So, you know, I gave a couple of examples already in what you say to yourself before you go to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. um, but seriously, this is the example I usually give people. So you've planned a beautiful picnic with that special person in your life, right? And you've bought all the gourmet food and, you know, and you're planning to go out into the country by a farm and, you know, sit there with your sweetie and have this wonderful picnic. And you wake mm -hmm. up in the morning and it's pouring rain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So pouring rain is a fact. Mm. The words that we say about the pouring rain create our world. Mm. So I wake up and I go, oh, great. It's pouring rain. It's <laughs> ruining my day. It's ruining my, you know, um, yeah. my picnic. It's raining I, on your parade. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that farmer who had said I could use his field yeah. is looking up into the sky and going, Oh my God, yeah. it's raining. How wonderful. My seeds needed it. The plants needed it. The, the world needed the water. And so for him, his words create a blessing. Mm -hmm. And for me, my words create a curse. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, a, there's a, uh, um, a passage in the Bible that says, you know, you can, you can be either a blessing or a curse, mm -hmm. you know, choose to be a blessing. Well, we choose to be a blessing with our words. Mm -hmm. So our words are not only spoken words, which are obviously, they don't only just impact us, they impact the people around us, but also the words in our head, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I can wake up this morning and say, you know, because I had a choice this morning, right? I'm coming on the daily dose. It's my first time doing something like you know, like this with you. And I've seen all these wonderful people come before me. And I could have woken up this morning going, Oh, my God, I'm so nervous. I, my voice is going to go, I'm not going to be able to do this. And I would have created this stressful world to step mm -hmm. into. But instead, I woke up this morning going, Oh, my God, you know, the road has been paved by all these wonderful people. And Michael is such a great guide on this trip. And you know, and I'm just going to speak from my heart and it's going to be fabulous, mm -hmm. you know? So I created a comfortable world to step into as opposed to a very uncomfortable world. Mm -hmm. And so I, I encourage people to listen to what they say mm -hmm. yeah. and, and reframe it. I actually posted something up into the daily dose early on about reframing things like, oh my God, I'm stuck at home. Mm. Well, the other way of saying that is I have an opportunity to work at home where I can actually watch what my children do during the day mm. and appreciate their growth. Yeah. I'm safe at home is better than I'm stuck at home. Or you know, I'm even if there's right, right, even if they're just saying I'm safe at home versus I'm stuck at home, mm -hmm. it changes the way it's a reframing, like you said. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those where I think a lot of people doesn't don't even notice what they say. I, I will tell you one of my gifts is I'm I'm a listener of metaphors. And when somebody every metaphor a person uses is real for them. And and sometimes I need to to call them on it. You know, when when they're saying that somebody's raining on your parade or or some, you know, it's like are, is, is somebody really raining on your parade? You know, I mean really raining on your parade. So you know, and, and it's just like we need to to take the negative and, and see what is really the positive of it. And, uh, you know, that's the spirit of successful people is, is do they have negative thoughts? Yes. Absolutely. But you know what? 
they are better at reframing the things that some people might see as negative to be positive. And that's what the successful person does is they see the positive come out of almost anything. And uh, it is what it is. So, man, this time just literally flew by. But I have to read this from one of your students, Shalee. And you you did probably know that I was going to do this. So, so Neil Smith and Shalee Davis taught 30 Mornings West Coast Edition. And um, so this is from Lisa Swanson, who's from Arizona. And she said, I really didn't know what to expect going into 30 mornings. It stretched me in ways I didn't expect. And I am so appreciative of the time and effort and love Neil and Shalee put into the class because it truly was evident and made such a difference to me and so many others of the class. Thank you. I would love to stay in touch and hope to see you in Scottsville in the fall, which is the referral mastery summit summit, uh, excuse me, referral mastery summit. If you need anything, please let me know ride from the airport, whatever it may be. You have a long, long time friend here in, in Lisa Swanson. And uh, I have several other uh, testimonials from 30 mornings that we don't have time to read now, but you know, I real I, I don't say, can you change your life in 30 mornings? Yes, you can. I don't, I don't say that in jest or as a marketing ploy or a promotional gimmick. The truth is, is, is this class is changing lives. This class and Shalee, you and Neil changed lives in 30 mornings and and you get to do it again starting Monday. You know, are you excited about that? I am really excited. And I have to tell you, you know, that I've taught the class before by myself and teaching it with Neil has so much more power Mm -hmm. because the students, you know, the, the participants, I also love the zoom platform. The participants Mm -hmm. really get to see multiple ways of doing a morning ritual that works well. Um, You know, I always tell people the morning ritual, it's not my morning ritual. It's not Michael's morning ritual. It's not Neil's morning ritual. It's your morning ritual. Mm. And so, you know, mix it up, change it up, Mm -hmm. try this, then try that, you know, try it for seven days and then mix a few things up and see what works. It, it's an iterative process. It's a process where you try it. And then if you don't like it, then you switch it a little bit here. You switch it a little bit there. You know, it's kind of like when you um, clasp your hands, most people will clasp their hands with one thumb on top. Try doing it with the other thumb on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to find the comfortable thumb on top in your morning ritual. And so it was just really fabulous having Neil's input into how he structures his morning my input, and then the input of all the people in the group. I think that every single participant in the class turned into a teacher. And that's what I love about it is it's not a, a teaching. It's a training, right? So so people, everybody in the class creates their own mm-hmm. ultimate morning ritual. And it's a safe place to try things out, to, to add something, to take it away. And you hit on it earlier is that it, it's built off this one degree tweak methodology instead of the 180 degree turn where some people teach it where, all right, you start on this day with the complete savers for an hour. You know, it's like, that's too much. Like you can't break people. You can only bend people, right? They say iron sharpens iron. Well, we are iron. So the thing is, is you can't break iron. You can bend iron into the shape that you want. And we're constantly bending it into shape. Well, right. We need to bend it one degree tweak at a time. And so we, you know, the first day you're waking up at 730. For some people, that's later than they normal. For some people, it's earlier. But, you know, the next week it's 715. Right. And they're like, you know, I didn't even really notice that we got, we started earlier, you know, and then seven. And then pretty soon they're at 630 in the morning and they're like, over 30 days, it's pretty easy to move 15 minutes a week. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, this isn't about getting up earlier. It's about getting up better. Uh, 30mornings.com is where you can check that out. Shelly Davis, it, it's just like, you are such a treat. And uh, so glad that uh, you have come into the fold of the generosity generation. And, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I think there's a class in the future, you know, with sweet dreams. Mm -hmm. and and doing the nightly ritual and i have a question for everybody who's listening right now is are you a night owl or early bird 
I want to know, are you a night owl or an early bird? So we're doing night night owls versus early birds. Who's <laughs> going to win? So in the comments below, say night owl or early bird. And you tell me which, which you are. And uh, I will tell you that I've discovered that I'm a little bit of both. <laughs> right? You know? So final words of wisdom here, Shali. You know what? What should people do next? Like they watch this video, they've they've listened to the podcast. You know what what is their next uh, what is their next step? So you know, I really do think that your next step is creating some sort of a bedtime ritual that works for you, mm. and it can be really simple. It can be you know just the affirmation, the bedtime affirmation. It takes like three or four minutes to do it, but it changes your day. It like it, as you said, I always say, you know, bookend the day. Mm -hmm. it, it puts a really beautiful touch to the end of the day, as opposed to just falling into bed and, you know, watching TV or whatever. I, I can't even imagine people that fall into bed and watch TV before they go to sleep because all of that news stuff is like in oh, their head all yeah. night long, you know? So I think the next step is give yourself the gift of turning off the media mm -hmm. and taking just a few minutes for yourself at night to be, to affirm and appreciate your day to pre-frame how you're going to sleep all night long. You know, I did this with my husband. He used to be an insomniac. Mm. And pre-framing that he was going to hop into bed and wake up tomorrow morning at a certain time. And when he closed his eyes, he was going to meditate for three to five minutes and then fall asleep and sleep through the night. That's a pre-frame. And yeah. he's not an insomniac anymore, for goodness Wow. Sake. That you is know? a great story. And... Uh, I have to tell you, it's a little bit my story too, right? I mean, I used to be, you know, fidgety all night and just mm -hmm. kind of thinking about things all night. But the meditation is very, even if it's just the breathing and I only have a couple of minutes to do it or whatever it may be, it wow. just gets me into the right mindset. I love that. So, Shali, oh my gosh, you know, here's what's interesting, right? Is like we talked about the magic pill and I truly believe that the one thing that I hope people embrace and retain from the quarantine times is that they retain a daily ritual that contains positivity and productivity, the daily dose. I hope everybody walks away with a daily dose of positivity and productivity somewhere in their day. Where, where they get it, it can be their morning ritual, it can be their nightly ritual, it can be their pre-leave ritual, it can be their, their drive-to ritual, drive-to-work ritual. It could be, you know, whatever it may be. But, but we all need a daily dose of positivity yeah. and productivity. And uh, that's what I hope that people uh, do. Are we committing to doing a, a daily dose every day for the rest of the year? The answer is no <laughs> way, right? No way, not happening. But people find their own. What I hope is people will find their own daily dose of positivity and productivity. And, and you've shared that with us today. So thank you so much, Shali, for being our guest today on the daily dose of positivity and productivity. Thank you for letting me be here. Everybody, I just want to say thank you, listeners, viewers, podcast listeners. I just want to say thank you so much for listening, viewing. You're the reason we do this. We have heard from you. You have spoken. And guess what? When you say you want to do a vision board class, we do a vision board class. When you want to do a time management class, we have a time management class. And from what I hear, we're going to do another one. Neil Smith is in demand. People want to do another one, you know? So bottom line is, you know what? We're here for you. This is the daily dose of positivity and productivity brought to you by the Generosity Generation, Referco. And I will tell you that... This is brought to you by referralspodcast.com, and I hope you check out that website. We've got some really cool things happening. We'll see you next time on The Daily Dose. <laughs>